lighting commentaries presented by Hawaiian Airlines and Honolulu Magazine. We're up here at 2,600 feet above the Kona coast in the drizzle, but we're here because this is where the real stuff grows. This is Kona coffee. Among the 150,000 coffee trees in Wyono Meadows Farm, and we got a whole bag full of it, what's called coffee cherries. Coffee is one of the few crops where you throw away the fruit and you keep the pit, essentially. The coffee cherry, people are trying to find uses for it because it's a really nice sweet fruit, but essentially it's dried off, gotten rid of, because the real stuff is deep inside here. I have picked my first coffee right here. There you go. Oh, it's really good. What have I got here? Oh, here's the bean. This is the bean. This is what we actually pick it for. OK. Right? The fruit is just a layer that we have to go through in order to get to the actual coffee itself. And it's covered with, what, what's this stuff called? That is called, they call it mucilage. It's, it's basically just a, a sticky layer of the actual flesh of the fruit where the, a lot of the sugar is at. Okay. What I'm noticing is that everybody is picking this coffee by hand. Mm -hmm. Do you have to do it that way? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, okay. in, in Kona, that's the only way you can pick, you can get the coffee. And it also helps ensure the, the quality of, of the ripeness of the cherry. Uh, elevation is, is one of the key factors for acidity specifically. Okay. Which, when we say acidity, when we're talking about coffee, we're actually talking about just vibrant flavors, not, a sh not necessarily a sharp like acid that you're tasting. What are the flavor profiles that distinguish Kona from, say, other mountain-grown coffees? I think that it's very sweet, rich. It's just got a very, very clean and just refreshing, uh, vibrant taste to it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a really nice cup of coffee. It's, it's hard to explain it. It's, it's it like wine. wine. It's yeah. got that suppleness of a great red wine. Yeah, Maybe not yeah. an old red wine either, a new red wine. Yeah. You know? What we're getting here is is 100% Kona coffee. One of the things I think Kona coffee has suffered from mm -hmm. by its reputation, on the mainland you can call something a Kona coffee blend if you got one bean. Yeah, I mean, there's no regulation for it on the mainland or around the world. So somebody might buy a little bit of Kona coffee, mix it in with a whole bunch of other stuff, and then say it's Kona coffee. Right, so I, th I think that's hurt Kona's reputation nationwide. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're not getting the, an accurate representation of what the product really is. Let's go get a basket and pick some of them. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. We don't want those. We want to. We want you know nice, even colored ripeness, all the way through to the to the the tip there, right? Okay. So if we grab one of these guys, it looks pretty bright on the outside, on the back, right? But if you look at this, it's kind of green, that's right? A drag. What so about it's, this one here? It's tough to get. Oh, oh no, that's a little tough. underripe, right? See? No. Yeah. In order to get, you know, your high-quality coffee, that evenness of the, the redness of the cherry itself is is very important to get the flavor that you want out of that coffee. That this basket will hold about 25 pounds of coffee cherry or so, which you know is only about three pounds of roasted coffee. And it like to fill this basket up is going to take me at least an hour. That's the standard coffee bean is going to be a double. This guy looks like sure. he's going to be a pea berry. Yeah, there's only one bean, and it's just a it's just a less common product. It, it it's only about you know, typically five percent or so of an actual coffee harvest. You actually see, it didn't have another coffee seed to grow against it, so it doesn't have that flat side. It has more of a rounded shape to it, and instead of growing next to each other flat, it actually just kind of grows as it will with the coffee cherry. You're making me thirsty for a cup of coffee. <laughs> This segment of Biting Commentary was brought to you by Feed the Hunger Foundation, microfinancing toward innovative and sustainable solutions. We see a world where we who have kukua those who have less. Imagine food that's healthy, food that does no harm to the environment. Imagine food that's affordable and accessible, food that harnesses local entrepreneurship. Imagine food that brings together families and communities in ways that will nourish the aina, 
Feed the Hunger Foundation. Microfinancing toward innovative and sustainable solutions. Visit HonoluluMagazine.com today to enter to win a trip for two to any Hawaiian Airlines international destination. Zippity doo da, zippity doo. We're down at the south end of the Big Island, and I thought as long as we were down here, we go down to Honolulu Bake Shop. Now I've had their sweet bread, but I've never actually been down here. I hardly ever get down to this end of the Big Island. I've heard a rumor of Kona Coffee Tiramisu here, and I know that they have Kau Coffee. We've had Kona Coffee, but Kau is really coming up as a coffee growing region on the Big Island as well. So, welcome to Nahalehu. We're on our way to Punalu'u Bake Shop. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. Here at Punalu Bake Shop with Connie Koi, who works here, and it turns out they don't have a Kona coffee tiramisu. No, 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 no. They have a Kau coffee tiramisu because we're not in Kona anymore, we're in Kau. What do I do first here? Okay, the first thing you should do is you need to grease your pan so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Now, I'm guessing I got a knife, I got a loaf of bread, I'm, I'm uh, slicing it? Yes, you are. Yeah, about, about an inch like that? Yes, a nice right. thick slice. Yes. How many do I want of these? You want about four slices. Now you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna cut it to this four, way? yeah, in thirds. See, I'm getting good at this already and this is my first one. And I'm guessing we're gonna put these in the pan. Yes, you're gonna line the bottom of the pan in a single layer. So if I have leftovers, I'm okay? Yeah, just as long as you cover the bottom of the pan. Do we put okay. coffee in? We put nothing but the best, Kau coffee. Okay. Okay, and you're and gonna this, normally this use a very dark brew. You're gonna try to double your strength as far as the brewed coffee. Yes. Here we have a half a cup of Kau coffee. You're gonna add a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla and one tablespoon of powdered sugar. Oh, why confectioner sugar and not just sugar sugar? It has a little bit of cornstarch in there, so it kind of adds as a binding agent. Whisk it up. I have to whisk it now. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, whisking. Oh, the sugar dissolves nicely though. Yes, it does. All right. Just... What you're gonna do is you're gonna pour it over the sliced bread. Okay. And be sure to get all of the slices. Trying to make sure I get all of them here. You know, this is nerve wracking work really, Connie. I don't know how you stand it every day. Ha! Okay. okay. So you're gonna let it sift a little bit. It's gonna it soak up all that coffee flavor. In addition, it's gonna be kind of sweet bread, roast, dark roast coffee. There you go. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna make the custard for me? I'm gonna do the custard for you. Uh, go for it, girl. I'll do the hard part. Okay, yeah, I knew. I knew that the first team had to come in here at some point. Okay, so here we have nine whole eggs that we're gonna whisk together. So it's not particularly rich, is it? Just nine eggs. Well, it does get pretty rich. <laughs> So we set up. All right. Get those yolks. And we okay. seem to have a fair bit of condensed milk sitting here. Yes, we have sweetened condensed milk, and this is a 14 ounce can. So that'll add a lot of sweetness if we did. Yes, Whoa, so we're not at. Oh, yeah. Then it calls for one can evaporated milk. Oh, okay. And this is a 12 ounce can. I suppose okay. you could make it with cream if you wanted, right? If put some sugar, extra or sugar milk. in it. Yeah. Or milk if you don't want it as rich. Okay, and then finally we have a teaspoon of vanilla extract again. Oh, I can smell it. Actually, okay. I, I wish you were here in smell vision because the bakery smells are just wafting out here and it's driving me totally nuts. That's how we lure people here. You really? People can smell the bakery and they just come from miles around? Oh, yes. There are malasadas over there, there's cupcakes, there's just all sorts of good things. All right. <laughs> okay. I can do that part. Okay, pour it. If you won't promise not to scold me the whole okay. time. Okay. I'll be nice. Just pour it right over. I'm trying to pour it evenly. evenly. I'm, I'm doing my best to be even. There's a whole lot of it. it looks like oh, it yes, and it's going to soak it up. Wow. Okay, very good. Wow. Yeah, just kind of tap it in there. Let it soak it all in before you stick it into the oven. That's we happen right. to have one 
already baked, right? Already made. Uh, it won't be my fine work, but I'm sure it'll be great anyway. Okay, well, let's go. You okay. want to do the professional cutting thing? Okay. This deep brown color, is that the coffee we put in originally, or did you do something to this one? Well, actually, what we did is once it comes out of the oven and it's cooled, we dusted it with cocoa powder. You start out with something good, which is the sweet bread, and then, oh, look at that. It's got custard, it's got coffee, and I get whipped cream too, right? Yeah. Oh, look at this. Very professional. I like that. Forks at the ready. Here we go. Nice sweet bread, custard, coffee. Oh, that's actually really nice. It's kind of sweet bread pudding and um, mm. got that little touch of coffee in there. Mm -hmm. Kind of hiding in the background. Got the cocoa powder, got the whipped cream. How could you go wrong? Right? At the southernmost bakery in the United States. That's right. There you go. We can call it southern food if we want. This Fast Kind Tip is sponsored by Hawaiian Airlines. The grinder has a major part to play in the quality of the coffee that you come out with. $35, you can get a little hand grinder that works just fine. They have blade grinders. That doesn't do a real good job grinding, and you can spend about $80, you can get a nice burr grinder. It does a very nice job of getting the coffee grinds all about the same size, which means you're gonna get a much more even extraction. You do all the grinding all the same size, and you get a nice, even, mellow brew. It's not about the sea. It's about who's in it. Every day, Hawaii flies with us. If you want to know where to eat right now, pick up Honolulu Magazine and check out our monthly dining coverage, including our all-island restaurant guide and our annual list of Hale Aina Award winners. For even more dining, go online to honolulumagazine.com or download our free iPhone app. Honolulu Magazine is the only resource you need for dining. We're here downtown Honolulu at Beach Bum Cafe where it's morning. So Dennis, meet my friend Dennis McCoy, and he uses all estate grown Hawaii coffee. And two, he's got about a hundred different ways to make coffee. So Dennis, do your stuff. I have this really great Kona coffee. It's called Aloha Honey Kona. It's from Aloha Farms. And the honey has to do with the way it's processed. They dry it with the mucilage on the bean and it enhances the sweetness of the coffee. All right, because there is a lot of sweetness in that little... In the mucilage, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's almost all sugar. It does definitely enhance the sweetness when they do the drying that way. It really makes a pretty dramatic difference in the flavor. Sun drying especially. Especially, yeah. So how much... And it can take eight to 10 days of drying. Oh, no kidding. So yeah. it is labor intensive. Yeah. It takes a while. Now, how much coffee per cup of coffee do you use? I use a ratio of 16 to 1. What I'll do now is put the top chamber on loosely. This chain is going to lay on the bottom. Uh, that chain serves a function of removing some of the heat from the glass. It helps uh, protect from glass shattering. I'm going to push it down there, and what that's going to do is increase the pressure in the glue. Oh. Here it comes. Yep, the, uh, the hot water is being forced up the tube right Much now. Much like science lab. We got the bubbles going here. So right now, I'll put the coffee in the top. I'll give it a stir. Yeah. All right, here we go, here we go. You turn off the heat. Turn off the Boom. heat. The this back. is actually not being drawn down by gravity. It's actually being drawn down by vacuum. Yeah, this is just fascinating. I'm sitting here mesmerized <laughs> by the coffee. Come on, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> now, could somebody get one of these at home? Absolutely. They, they work great at home. At nighttime with some friends and having dessert. It's very nice effect to put these out on the table. And there's the bubbles of the air being pulled through. And you can see, yeah, the top of the coffee it doesn't even look wet anymore. This is ready to be served. And here you are, a nice cup of honey kona brewed in a vacuum pot. Oh, now that looks like a cup of coffee.
Oh, very wine. You know, John, with good coffee, you don't need to add cream and sugar. There's, there should be almost no bitterness. You might get a little lemony flavor, mm -hmm. which is different from bitter. That's from the acidity. Well, there's the lemon at the end. Yeah, they, yeah. It's, it's very it's a, bright. It's a lemon it's finish, a, yes. You, as they say, right, 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 beautiful cup of coffee. <laughs> All right. I love your map up here, which reminds us that although we're drinking Kona, there's coffee all over Hawaii? It's really funny. People come in here, I'll mention that I sell only Hawaiian coffee. They go, oh, you only have Kona. Mm -hmm. So I have to explain, well, there's coffee from all these different islands. And you know, there's coffee grown on uh, Kauai. In fact, it's one of the largest coffee uh, farms in the world. There's seven or eight other coffees that are grown in Hawaii. And that some is. of them are grown in the Kona region that they can't call it Kona because oh. it's not of the variety Typica. Oh, only the Tipica like, can be called Kona if it's grown, and that. only if it's grown in the Kona region. I did not know you had to grow Tipica. I just thought yeah. if you grew in Kona, yeah. you had Kona coffee. Right. No. Yeah, we were up at Wyona Meadows, which is about oh, 2,500, yes. 3,000 feet. Yeah. And their coffee matures so slowly, they're still picking in the summertime. That's right. That's one of the best Kona coffees you can buy. <laughs> oh, I, I should have picked you some. I was up there picking. Yeah. It's just picking turns out to be a slower process than I thought, right? It is, especially for people like you and me. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> the pros were a little faster, I have Yeah, to they, admit, fill, they fill a basket in a few minutes. One of the things that uh, we try to do at Bijon Cafe is to get as many of these really specialty little coffee farms as we can and bring their coffees in. Yeah, I'm reading your board. Yeah. You know, it's a, where the farm is, how you roasted it. Right, right. Know. The so roast got, level, yeah. So we got Oahu, Molokai, Maui today. Hawaii farming is, in general, is very sustainable type of farming. The farmers really care about what they're doing. They care about their land. They care about their crops. And I think it's the best coffee you can buy. Now, you see a pretty bright future for Hawaiian coffee. I see a very bright future. I mean, coffee from Hawaii right now is uh, gaining recognition around the world as being some of the best there is. Um, we have Pete Licata, okay, took second yeah. in an international yeah. coffee contest with uh, using an all Hawaiian espresso. That says a lot for not just his talents, which he is very talented, but the coffee, the taste has to be there in order to win those contests. And that's the first time an all Hawaiian coffee has ever taken uh, any kind of placing like that. So, how do you make coffee at home, then? Do you use if, that vacuum thing? I don't use the vacuum pot so much at home. It's, it's nice and showy for the shop, and but it does brew a nice cup of coffee. But typically, when I'm at home, I like to use the sock pot. It's a cloth flannel, cotton flannel filter that's used for this. And uh, basically, you just grind the coffee, put it on the inside there, and then do a slow pour over. The oils give body to the coffee. Mm -hmm. Letting some of the oils come through add some body, but if there's too much oil in the coffee, you miss all those nice floral high tones of the coffee. So this is a good balance. It lets some of the oil come through for body, but you still get those floral tones. Okay. Chris, this is a very big, cool looking French press. This one, you get all of the oil from the coffee. So this one, you get more of the like chocolatey flavors, the darker, heavier tones in the coffee, but a lot of body. And you also get a lot of sediment, too. So you, yeah. it has. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. It's a little pasty. You, know, so you might want to leave a little bit in the bottom of the cup so you don't get a mouthful of mud. But. Well, you know what? It's really a pleasure to be able to just come downtown and have somebody so focused on, on Hawaii coffees, right? Oh. You know, this is not your fast cup of coffee. It's kind of slow food, as it were. It's slow food, it's good food, it's local. You know, we're supporting the local farmers here, we're helping the environment by reducing the amount of waste and fuel that's being used to ship stuff from the mainland. And it's just the right thing to do is to buy Hawaiian coffee when you're here. It's good for the economy, oh, good for the soul. Good for the soul <laughs> and good in the cup, right? Good in the cup. Yeah, we were at the farm with Pete, but I got to go over and congratulate him. So thank you very much for this, Dennis. It's and good tell to him see I said it. hello. I will do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, this was fun. This was fun, especially the Maui. That was probably good, <laughs> right? Right. But uh, thanks for the cup of coffee because I am now awake. All right. This Fast Kind Tip is sponsored by Hawaiian Airlines. There's different ways to make a cappuccino. The main way to make a cappuccino is to make sure that you have enough foam on top. Okay. The temperature is very, very important. Our texture of our milk, once we're done, should look kind of like wet paint. It doesn't have any big bubbles that you think of when you think of foamy oh, milk. Yeah. yeah. And big bubbles can come from heating the milk too hot or just improper technique. Got it. So when we have it, we have our crema on our espresso in our cup. Yeah. Right? And then we're going to pour our milk in very carefully and we're going to make a little bit of latte art on top of that. Oh, look at this. Look at this. 
right? A leaf. How nice. It's not about the sea. It's about who's in it. Every day, Hawaii flies with us. Visit HonoluluMagazine.com today to enter to win a trip for two to any Hawaiian Airlines international destination. You're watching Fighting Commentary. I need a cup of coffee, and not just any cup of coffee, because I'm going to get it from the number one barista in the United States, Pete Licata, Honolulu Coffee Company, and I'm not kidding. He just won the United <laughs> States Barista Championship. Now, right. what is this? That is a tamper. A tamper? Yes. Don't tamper with it? That's right. A tamper is used by a coffee professional to make espresso. Oh, this is a tamper as to well. To pack down the That's beans? That's right. Pack down the coffee grounds. All right. Fair espresso. You know, I've made coffee in every conceivable way, but I have never made a cappuccino. Really? Yeah, never. You going right. to show me how? Sure, yeah. Let's let's do that, but let's make it a little bit more interesting, make it a little bit more fun. More fun? Yeah. More fun. We're talking syrups. I love spices. All right. So, do we switch sides here? Uh, yeah, you know, let's let's do this. So, let's let's start off first by getting our cup ready. How about All that? right. Okay. We'll, we'll need a cup. We'll need a cup. We'll need a cup. One of the things I like to do, it like adds a lot of flavor and a little sweetness, really, really easy, is a simple syrup. So this is a simple syrup that I did with cinnamon, and give it a, give it a taste. Good. It's pretty amazing. All right, let me smell it. Oh yeah, cinnamon right? spice, everything it's nice. Really easy, All right. really easy to make. Let's, Let's just make it go sweet. For it. All right. Let's go for it. So we're just gonna pour a bit in there. Whoa. That's that's plenty. You think that's yeah. sweet enough? That, and we're gonna put our espresso shots. Right into in this, the into this, yeah, and it'll mix up when we put the milk in, right? First we thing coffee. we need is coffee, right? Okay, I see the you tamper. Look, you look very confused. I need a thingy. <laughs> need a porta filter. I do. Is that what that's called? Oh, yes. Okay. Now we're gonna turn it on. Wait a minute. And you're gonna pull this forward, all the way forward, and all the way back, right? Okay. And it's gonna grind lots of coffee for us, so we got plenty of coffee there. And now we need to. Scoot it? We need to smooth it around. We need to fill in the gaps, right? Okay. We're not going to have enough coffee in there. Not oh, enough? That's going to be a bad shot of coffee. Too. It looks like plenty to me. Okay. I'll you take know, your word for it. We'll see how it goes. Know, I may be wrong. <laughs> um, now, you set it down on the counter. Got it. Make a nice stable base, and then you're going to press down straight down. Pull, pop your elbow up. There we go. Keep your wrist straight. All right. Okay. Not enough coffee, huh? Eh, it's a little low. So before we put it in, we're going to clean it off, right? Clean off all that stuff. Okay. All right. Lock it in there. And, and then, pull it across once oh, it locks in. Oh, genius work. Right? Genius work. Okay. So, start it right up. I got my cinnamon syrup. Push our button. I don't see anything coming out. Oh, oh, here we go. A little fast. A little yeah. fast. A little fast. All right. Well, while this is happening, oh, on one I got of these lovely the machines, we need to steam the milk, right? Now, that's that one is particularly beautiful because it has, as they say, a nice crema on it. All right. All right. So. Pull that guy out. I want it hot, almost too hot to touch. Yeah. Right? So pull it all the way down. All right. Now, so we want to be careful with this. We want it to stir around in there and just barely break the surface. All right. Because we want the consistency of white paint. Right. We don't want to scald it though. So that's why we want it to stir all stir around in oh, there. Oh, it's getting hot, man. Yeah. I would probably turn it off pretty soon then. All right. Okay. Now I take this. We do one thing before we do that too. We clean. Oh, we clean. Well, let's let's help this out here. So I got a little chocolate powder. Oh, chocolate now. Chocolate. Oh, man, yeah, I told you we're gonna make this fun, man. All right. Give it a little, just a, just a little something on there. So, All right. All right. I'll help you out. You're gonna help me out. Yep. Come okay. on over here. Come on All over right. here. All right. We're gonna swirl this around. This is gonna smooth out the foam. I want you to pour nice and steady. All right. A little closer to the the actual cup. Just wave it back and forth. A little, little smoother. A little smoother. Well, somebody else is grabbing and, onto my. Uh, yeah. One of the most beautiful cappuccinos I've made, ever made. I think this is one of those galaxies that I've seen the Hubble take. I know. This of. is this my is astronomical a, cappuccino. This, it looks beautiful, though. It is. It's, it's exquisite, really, when you think about it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Now that we have coffee, mm -hmm. why don't we go taste my creme brulee? 
That sounds like a good idea. All right. All right, here we go. Okay. Hey, you made that one. Tell you what, I'll trade you. You know, yours looks pretty tasty. I'll, I'll, I'll go right, ahead and take I'm yours. Right. See if we can tell a difference. You know, I hate to hear it. You know, actually my favorite coffee flavor is coffee. <laughs> oh, right? Wow. You know, because coffee has, is a flavor, as a matter of fact. Here we go. This one, i um, interested to see what this tastes like. It looks kind of um, Well, yours is actually good. Yours is actually good. What do you think? I'm um, not entirely sure what to say about that. Okay, that but... seems fair. <laughs> that seems fair. It was a good effort. It was a you good know, effort, it's so. a, my first one. It's my first one. Okay. And compared to yours, it looks terrible, <laughs> right? So I hope it tastes better than it looks. Now, we've been to the farm. Yep. We've, we've taken this coffee all the way from Kona to here, and uh, we've made a chocolate cinnamon cappuccino. More or less, it's, yeah. It's, it's, been a, it's been a great journey. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, thank you for coming along with us. Give me an It's Been Fun. No, It's Been Fun. Well, now we've done sweets, we've done coffee drinks, but the book even has savory coffee recipes. So there's plenty of uses for Kona coffee. This is John Heckethorn for Biting Commentary. I guess it's kind of growing on me a little. Yeah, it's, it's getting terrible. It's, it, I didn't want to tell anybody. <laughs>